two months from today, the college football season is scheduled to begin. Usually that would generate buzz from Morgantown to Tuscaloosa to Eugene. But late last week, reports of double digit positive tests for football players at Clemson and Texas Tech during voluntary workouts continue to raise down on the possible announcement that the season will start on time. In Happy Valley, Penn State head coach James Franklin has chosen to keep his family quarantined in Florida to protect his 12 year old daughter Addison, who has sickle cell disease. As for his players concerns, Franklin joined David Pollock and me on the Herbie and Pollock podcast to discuss Penn State's approach on workouts. We made it very clear and obvious to everybody that this was not mandatory. This is voluntary. If you're not comfortable coming back, don't come back. And, and we have you know, we have 38 players that haven't returned yet. And we have, I think, six scholarship players that, that have chose not to return as well. And that's fine. Uh, that's, that's perfectly understandable. And the hard part is, is you can have all the policies and procedures you want when they're with you. But when they go out in the community or other people in the community are not following your policies and procedures, that's what makes it so challenging. College Game Day's Reese Davis joining us now with much more on this story. So, Reese, there, there are many layers here. Mm -hmm. What's the confidence level right now that we will actually have a college football season this fall? In some form, Kevin, it's still really high. Uh, I think they're going to play. Uh, there certainly might be some alterations to the schedule, as you and I were talking earlier, particularly uh, among teams outside the Power Five. Potentially, their schedules could be impacted. But uh, I think that, that there's still a great deal of optimism and reason to think that games will be played. How many people will be in the stands, if any? Um, we don't know that yet. And I think there's still so much to learn over the next couple of months. Um, what does what all of these positive tests at a variety of schools across the country mean? Uh, what does it mean uh, by virtue of the fact that at least based on what's been reported up to this point, it seems that uh, not many players, thankfully, ha have not gotten seriously ill. So all of those things, I think, will unfold over the next several weeks. And then once the practices start, uh, does that impact uh, testing and, and sickness and that type of thing? So many things could change, but I still have a, a great deal of optimism that there will be that there will be a season. Yeah, the uniqueness of college football, we've discussed this before, too. It, it's not like it's the NBA. It's not like the NFL or Major League Baseball or the MLS or the NHL, because many of these student athletes are on campus surrounded by thousands of other students. And with COVID-19 still here, what concerns you most about what could derail the season? Serious illness uh, within a team or, or on a campus. That type of thing, I think, could make everybody take another step back and look at it and say, this is not a tenable situation. I hope and pray that doesn't happen because you don't want anyone, not because of football, just because you don't want anyone to get seriously ill. But I think that's the number one concern. And I think that, you know, everyone in society, certainly in football, is still trying to adjust until there are treatments, effective treatments, or potentially someday a vaccine. How do we live uh, with, with the constant threat of this and how do we mitigate it and those types of things? And as James perfectly said to, uh, to you, James Franklin from Penn State, you can't always control everybody else that, they might, uh, that players might inadvertently come into contact with. And I think another thing, Kevin, it's really important for the medical personnel uh, to lead the way on this. And I, I've really taken note of UCLA situation where I think it was 30 some odd players signed a letter that they would like to have um, an independent person overseeing the practices to make sure that everything's followed. And UCLA seems to be on board with that. Um, so, you know, I, I, now I'm saying on board with it, meaning they understand the sentiment. I'm not sure about the result, but um, you know, those types of things I think are, are still going to play out and could be greatly impacted uh, if someone uh, not only test positive, but then becomes uh, becomes significantly ill, which we hope and pray doesn't happen. Excellent point there, leaning on the medical personnel moving forward on this for these uh, many young men and women in all of college athletics. Reese, thank you. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.